Hey everybody, Ronaldo Offerman here with my DMX video manuals. And today I want to talk to you about Easy 3D. Now Easy 3D is available in any of the my DMX 2.0 boxes. On Buddy, it will be one of the upgrades that you can purchase. But either way, the software is going to work exactly the same for whether you're using an upgrade of Buddy or a 2.0 box. So right now I am using the August, uh, I want to say the August 3rd beta. Uh, so obviously by the time this video comes out, by the time you see it, there may be a slightly different version or whatever the case may be. But overall, it should work the same. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up our 3D. It'll take just a second for it to go. It is a secondary program. It's called Easy View 2. Now right now, if I go here, it kind of disappears. So we're just going to go and put it on the top window. And the way we do that is right here, always on top. And what I like to do is I'm going to bring this guy over here. And I'm still on the setup screen which is fine if you want to go into editor you can do that but I like setup because everything's just a little bit better place for what I'm about to do so we're just gonna go here and that way you can see all of our faders and we can see our 3d window or easy 3d area so just so you can get an idea of what you have and this is very similar if you guys ever watching my compu show videos this is very similar to how the compu show easy uh, view works but the easy view too so much cleaner, faster, and definitely better looking. On um, the main part here, we've got our 3D view part, and we can actually grab a moving head here, and we can move it around. So I can also do it on top view or front view, and the reason I want to do that is because it would allow me to make it to make it more precise. So watch, for example, I'm going to go ahead and lay it out here. We're going to do our moving heads. So you see right there when I move it? kind of shows you in a 3D space of what it does. So on the front view, I'm going to grab one. I'm just going to bring them down. And I can actually just go ahead and bring them all down here. And with this one, I just want to make sure they're spaced evenly. You know, at least as best as I can with that. Maybe something representative of my truss may be. And then to make sure they're, you know, within the same height or the same area, just make sure those are lying there. And then I'm going to take the floods over here. And what I could do is, hold on one second. I'm going to command click so that way I can grab all of them. For some reason, doesn't want, seem to want to grab as well since I'm screen recording. But whatever, we'll just move one at a time. But at least you know, hey, you can grab multiple ones. That's going to be important and you'll see why in just a second. All right, so now we've got them on top of our truss, nice and pretty. And then when I go here, I see that everything's aligned quite nicely. It's, everything's aligned as far as the top, you know, where one's not higher than the other. Because see, when I move this here, this is the Z-axis, right? So if I move, let's say, for example, this slide over here, Okay, it moves that. So it kind of gives you a nice way to be able to control everything, make sure everything's aligned. Okay, so we've got it all aligned nice and even, and I can actually name individual pars as well within Easy View. So for example, there's par one, and it gives me all the different ones. So I'm actually going to go ahead and make sure that it's on 251 as far as the height. All right, see there's 189, so we're just going to move that to 251. All right, oh, that one's already 251. That one's a 251. Pretty easy. Now, what I want to see is if this version will allow me, because again, I'm on a beta, so I'm not sure if I can grab multiple ones and rotate them. No, so I can grab multiple ones here. So we'll just grab each one. So we want to line them out where it hits the crowd. There we go. Easy. Now, of course, we can just kind of turn that. I'm going to just zoom in. If you're on a Mac and you're on, like, for example, a MacBook, fingers, and then you, or you, as you click to zoom in and zoom out. Now, on the right hand side here, we have our basically scene. Uh, this is an individual folder of 3D objects. Again, the beta is still in a 3D anyway, so there's not a lot that you can add in there, but there are ways you can add that other objects. And that'll be for a much uh, later on video. You can have your ambient lighting, so you can actually control a little bit. Make it more realistic to what the room would look like. You can control the intensity of your lights. Fire the torpedoes. Pew, or I guess photons. So we're just going to leave it like that. 
And of course, you have the range of how high your lights are going to go. And uh, this is basically what I call a no haze mode. So if I'm going to run the lights, I can, you know, have it with no haze or, you know, little haze output or whatever the case may be. So we're just going to have it like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and test just one of the NO spots. So I'm just going to bring this guy up over here. There it is there. And the colors do a really nice representation of what it looks like, as well as the gobo. Now this says gobo five one uh, one through five or six, whatever the case may be, because this SSL two or the profile has not been loaded with the images. So that is something you can ask. You, you, can, you can either make yourself, or you can ask one of the elation guys, such as James. Hey, do you have a profile with the right gobo images on there? And of course, we've got the prism, and it seems that in this particular version, the prism does not show. So just kind of keep that in mind. But the gobo rotation does work. Focus does not currently work on there. One of the nice things that I do like about EasyView is that EasyView does work with barrel scans. So you will see some of the barrel scanners on there if you load it in. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and minimize that. We're just going to add our NO roll. Look how easy that is. All right, there we go. We have our NO roll. And there's the NO roll. See, it appeared instantly. Now our inner roll is going to be our centerpiece fixture. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to move the inner roll right in between. And we're just going to kind of just kind of put it right there. And we're going to move these guys out a little bit. Because now we're going to expand where our trussing would be, right? Ah, tag nabby, there we go. Got to click just right to be able to get these where you want them to be. There we go. So there's our inner roll, and now we're going to just select it this way. All right, that's good enough. Now let's try the inner roll here. So there is our, oh, let's see. So we're going to go grab this guy. We're going to turn it on. Oh, that's our par cans. Ha, my bad. Boy, good thing I know what I'm doing here. There we go. So we're going to turn our dimmer. See, I should have noticed because of different color change, but I'm slightly colorblind here. So there's our inner roll, and I see that it's facing the wrong direction. We'll fix that in just a second. We can change the colors. And what's really cool is if you look is that easy view does compensate for half colors. So there it is right there. Now while it may not be a true representation of what the roll effect is supposed to look like, at least it does show you, hey look, we've got beams and everything else. Now I see this version doesn't have the pan and tilt on it, but again, they will be working on it as it goes further along. But just so you have an idea of how that works. So again, that's the easy view too. Now let's look over here on the, this side. Uh, again, we have our properties. We can change your position, your rotation, and your scale. Oh, and I guess it is pointing the right direction. So again, not perfect, not like the previous version, but they will work on things little by little. So what do we have on the top part? Well, we can create a new project. We can open an existing project and we can save it. I'm going to go ahead and save it. And I'm just going to do it on my iCloud drive. We're going to call this my DMX demo because this is my demos that I'm doing for you. So, of course, we have our save it. We can save it under a new name. We can change the display mode. So we can just have it full screen or have with all the options on here. And then we have our settings. You can change right now just your stage size. There's not a lot that you can really do with it right now. You can also import a 3D object from an external file. And that is something that we will talk about later particularly with Google SketchUp. Uh, I know one of the users on the MyDMX group did a really nice job with that. So I'm going to ask if I can use his for the video. But anyhow, that's it. Easy view too. Uh, again, this is the beta version, but it's pretty easy to use. And of course, I forgot to mention, you know, you got your options during file too. But that's it. If you guys have any questions, please make sure to leave a comment, share this video with, video with your friends, and please join our MyDMX user group. The, DM, uh, the link to the MyDMX user group is on the comment section below. But please make sure to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. Good night and God bless.